In this video, we'll review how to create a pipeline. So pipelines will always be configured over here in this tab, but they'll always be kicked off from within your branch. So if we wanna create a new pipeline, we'll click new. The requirement here, just give it a unique name. Click save, and you'll see on the right-hand side here, steps are noted as blank. We haven't added any yet, but FlowSum will automatically build out this flow for you as you add your pipeline steps. So in order to add your pipeline steps, we can hover over this link and then click new. Now for today's short video, we'll just do a simple validate and deploy to my QA2 orgs. So we'll add two steps. Operation is validate. If the validate to QA2 succeeds, we'd probably want to move on to step two. If the validate to QA2 fails, you probably want that process to stop. No way that deployment's going to be a success. In addition to these steps, for the developers, you can define what kind of test you want executed upon that validate or deploy, but I'll leave it as default for now. So if the validate to QA passes, we would naturally want to deploy to QA2. If the deployment to QA2 passes, great, our deployment made it there. If the deployment to QA2 fails, it's not great, but you'll still get your email notification of your Salesforce error messages. This looks good to me now, so if we click Save Steps, here you can see on the right-hand side, Flowsum automatically built that out for us. Now, if we actually wanted to kick this off in real time, I'm gonna to go to my branches tab and just click on a random branch for us. I'll click on the JR678. So let's pretend we already walked through all of our quality gates. I'll simply click run pipeline. Click run pipeline. And since there's a deployment tied to that pipeline, Flowsum knows to automatically take a backup of the QA2 org before actually trying to deploy. And here we can track that deployment history under this tab here and the validate and deployment are currently in progress.